Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the MMA Corner Post-Fight Recap. As tonight, we come at, you, come at you live on the heels of UFC 178, Johnson vs. Carriasso. Tonight's episode is brought to you by BattleBomb, the only pain reliever with the knockout power. BattleBomb.com. Check them out. Bony SI, everything you need in all of your weight loss, health, nutrition products. Go to the MMACorner.com, halfway down the page on the right-hand side, Vitor Belfort. Click on that. We have all the promos that you need, uh, bony aside. I'm your host, Josh Davis, alongside my co-hosts for the evening, Justin Fuller and Jason Schelke. Justin, give us your thoughts on the overall card. You know, we knew going into this, this was a stacked card. This is one of the most stacked cards we've seen in probably the last couple of years. So we had a lot of high expectations, and it did not fail to deliver one bit, top to bottom, prelims, main event, just great card all around, four of the five main card fights, finishes. So no complaints from this guy. Definitely worth the money. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't disagree with that. I mean, uh, again, when you talk totality of the card from – the very first fight to the very last fight. The card certainly delivered. I mean, I think there was uh, really only one fight that uh, didn't live up to the hype, didn't live up to expectations, but uh, there's a whole country that's cheering right now. So, uh, you know, it's still a win for somebody. Shelky, give it your thoughts. You know, it was a it was a really good card. I enjoyed it all. All the fights were really good. Um I'm just really disappointed that more people don't get behind Demetrius Johnson. I saw a tweet that I guess that uh, whenever the main event started, people started pouring out of the MGM Grand, but I guess that's something we'll get a little more in depth about whenever we talk about that fight. Yeah, I guess I guess we will. All right, so uh, let's get right into it. Uh, well, first let's start with the return of... Dominic Cruz. Obviously, we don't tend to talk about prelim fights on the show, but uh, since we broke it down on Wednesday, we'll go ahead and uh, recap it here tonight. I don't know what to say. It's been almost three years since the dude fought. He came back. He looked like a beast, flat out, uh, beat the crap out of Takeo Mitsugaki, made him look like a redheaded stepchild, seriously just whooped him. Uh, does he de deserve a title shot? I'm going to say absolutely he does. Uh, it was his title before his injury. He came back. It's not like uh, when Frank Mir came back and looked terrible. Uh, Dominic Cruz came back, looked good. Uh, like I said, it was his title to begin with. Uh, yes, I think he should be getting the, the next title shot, absolutely. And, and as he says it, uh, give him the opportunity to fight some more alpha fails. Uh, Shelky, give us your thoughts. Man, I, you know, the whole time leaning up into this fight, I had my fingers crossed that he would come out BJ Penn style with the belt around his waist that he never lost. If you remember that when BJ Penn first fought GSP. But, uh, I mean, Dominic Cruz, he just looked scary. And then after the fight, when he was just, he was sitting there like, <sighs> I was like, God damn, I feel sorry for the next guy that's got to fight this, man. He just he looked like a man on a mission, and he just looked terrifying, and I guess is the best way to describe it. Fuller? Yeah, I mean, there's he's he's the number one contender. I'm sorry, I don't care who's sitting at number one. Um, it, it's him. Like, you can't deny him a title shot, because the champ has beat number one. He's not going to fight number two. He did lose to number three, but that guy's still got to work his way back up. You know, number four ain't fighting for the title any soon. He just destroyed number five. Here's the thing. No one's ever done that to Mizugaki. Even when Faber beat him, that was like the end, you know, four minutes into the fight. Right? Like, you don't do that to a guy like that. But he just destroyed him. Not just convincingly, but just completely destroyed the number five Bantamweight, like, and the guy's a former champ who hasn't been beat it, since he was fighting at featherweight. So give him a title shot. I he looked great. Uh, I'm behind him. Let's see what he can do. You know, 
here's the thing. Um, okay, uh, I think it was either on the radio show, it might have been on, on uh, this show. Uh, I don't remember, we do so many of them, but we have it documented, so it's on one of them. We were talking about the rankings, the UFC rankings, and, I, and at the time, Dominic Cruz wasn't ranked, and I stated that the new UFC rankings were about to come out, and I was pretty confident that Dominic Cruz would be somewhere on the list before uh, he stepped into the octagon tonight, and he was. He was ranked number 10. Uh, with that being said, uh, do I think he's going to jump up all the way to number one? Probably. He, he certainly deserves to do so. I don't even like calling him the number one contender because in my mind he's still the champion. To be the champion, you have to beat the champion. And while I was a huge and still am a huge supporter of Hennon Burrell, he never beat the champion to get the belt. It was, you know, basically awarded to him. He was the interim title and then Dominic Cruz was stripped. So Hennon Brown never beat the champion. Yes, Dillashaw beat a champion, but not the champion. So we need to see uh, the dominator versus uh you know, the imitator and TJ Dillashaw, because that's exactly what he's doing, is imitating Dominic Cruz's style. So let's see who, who does it better. Uh, it's definitely the fight that I want to see next. It's the only one that makes sense as far as I'm concerned. All right, speaking of returns, we had the return of Katz and Dono. Now, uh, everyone knows that, you know, Katz a good friend of mine, and, you know, she had to go through a lot of crap in the last 17 months. She blew out her knee, lost her, um, just like Dominic Cruz, lost her golden ticket to, uh, you know, uh, fight for a title, get pay-per-view buys, all that kind of stuff. But for Kat, it went deeper than that. You know, she had the tragic loss of her, hu of her husband, uh, Mauricio Zangano, which obviously is, is a huge loss and regardless of, of the circumstances it was not easy for her to deal with and so uh, for her to come back after the 17 month layoff and get the victory is excellent now if uh, you saw the show on Wednesday night it went this fight went exactly the way I said it would I said uh, Amanda Nunez was going to come out uh, with the storm what cats asked for the first couple of minutes as long as cat could withstand that she would be able to uh, work her way back get a victory in the in the third round actually called the third round TKO uh, so I don't know what else to say it was a great victory for her. went exactly the the way that we figured it would go and and Shelky, give us your thoughts you know I mean it's just one of those feel-good stories that ended it the right way and got even better when I guess that it's that uh, Zingano versus Rousey's already been is done. It's just they haven't announced when it's going to happen yet. So she is going to get her chance at the title. She is going to get her chance at the pay per view, and she's going to get her chance on the biggest show there, you know, biggest platform there is. So you know, all the props in the world. I couldn't imagine coming back from everything that she's done or that she's gone through in the past 18 months and still be able to come in and compete at a, you know, very high level and earn a title shot against the best fighters in the world. So Fuller. that's all I can say. Yeah, uh, I know they did say they're looking at January for her, so my guess is it'll be that Jones-Cormier card, their you know, kind of New Year's time frame card on the third. Um, and he's right, like, everyone knew going into this, a win for Cat means a title shot. Like, the title shot she never really lost, but kind of had to, you know, prove she still deserved, and that was a, a win that proved it, you know. She's definitely slow to start. She was getting worked real good early in the fight. I thought, man, it's only a matter of time. Then she rallied, came back, got that third round finished beautifully. Um, you know, so it's just a perfect ending to that story. She's going to get her title shot. But I don't think she's a threat to Ronda Rousey, uh, honestly. She's a good fighter. She proved she can take a hit and deliver a hit and finish fights and put on exciting fights. But... Even though she's the number one contender, she's just not a real legitimate threat to Rousey. But honestly, I don't think anyone really is, so that's not an insult in any way. Um, but she's also deserving of the title shot, so let's put her in there and see what she can do. I hope she proves me wrong. Well, a couple of things. 
first off to Kat Zingano that fought tonight uh, while she got the victory and, and great story and all that kind of stuff. No, absolutely not. Uh, she would if, if she was fighting Ronda tonight, she would have got worked. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, 17 months ago, different story, but she definitely needed the tune-up fight. There's no question about it. Uh, with that being said, is she a threat to Ronda Rousey? Well, Styles make fights. There are certain things that Kat does that if she's able to capitalize on, uh, absolutely she can win that fight. Uh, is she going to do those things? Well, that's yet to be seen. Here's the thing about fighting. Everyone who steps into the cage has in their mind, you know, if I do these things right, I can win the fight. So uh, no one's been able to do those things right against Ronda yet. So uh, I don't know the cat will be the first. I think the the really only true test for Ronda Rousey right now is Cyborg. I think that's the fight that needs to happen. Uh, other than that, you know, I don't, at 135 pounds, I don't know uh, who's going to deal with with Ronda's strength. You know, she is, she's vicious. She's a lot stronger than people think. She's meaner. Uh, she's, she's solid. Um, now, with that being said, let's move right along. Joe Romero, Tim Kennedy, Shelky, start us off. Man, I, I don't get salty all that often uh, because of an outcome of a fight, but this one had me pissed. And Yo Yoel Romero got an extra 29 seconds on his stool after getting his clock clean. I mean, he if there was five more seconds left in that set in that second round, he was done, toast, gone. He got the uh, you know, uh, Tim Kennedy got the TKO victory. But because of that, but because of that, uh, you know that uh, stop it or that. Time, extra time he got on the stool, you know, and all the clusterfuck that went on with the getting the getting him out and getting all the cornermen out, you know, he got that extra time to recover and look what happened. Now I'm not saying that that wouldn't have happened if you want to have that extra time to recover, but I mean that's still, I mean, if you're the referee, you got to take charge of that shit and make sure that everyone's in and out when they're supposed to be. Oh yeah, yeah. To me. Um... I'm pretty sure when a fighter fails to answer the bell, that's thrown in the towel. That's that's fighter retiring from the fight. You don't answer the bell for 30 seconds after time's up. That's it. Like you quit. I'm sorry. How much time does he get? Like how do you penalize that? Do you deduct a point? You add on time? Like that all gets really squirrely when you're dealing with something like that. This wasn't like five, ten seconds. Oh, they were just fumbling around. They dropped the ice. You know, they, they tripped over the stool. You're sitting there not answering the bell. And that ref's got to be on that. Like, hey, get up. Get up now or I'm going to call the fight. Okay, you didn't get up. You lose. Like, that's how you handle that situation. But at the same time, he did something to Tim Kennedy. Whether that extra 30 seconds played a factor or not, no one's ever done to Tim Kennedy. Like, that's kind of what happened tonight. We saw guys get destroyed by dudes that they should have been more competitive against, and that's never happened to them before. Happened to Mizugaki, happened to Kennedy, um, you know, ha happened to Poirier. Like these guys just got absolutely destroyed tonight. So everyone that beat them, everyone needs to be on the lookout. But as far as the controversy, that's how I see it. You don't answer the bell, you retire from the fight, you lose the fight. Well, here's the thing. Uh, I can't really blame Big John for that. I mean, he told them to get out. They didn't get out. He repeated the order. You know, they started to slowly get out. He went over, told them to get out. When you wouldn't get off the stool, he basically picked them up off the stool and grabbed the stool. I mean, other than taking a point or anything like that, uh, I don't know what else to do. But again, if you take a point, you walk them around the cage, you know, indicating that you're taking a point, you're giving them more time to recover. Yep. So, I mean, really, what do you do in that situation otherwise other than just call the fight? And to be honest, I don't know. I would have to uh, research the rules on this. In that situation, does John McCarthy even have the ability to call the fight, or does it have to come from the doctor because he's not getting out, getting off the stool? And so, if you call the doctor back in again, you're just giving them more time to recover. So, uh, 
I don't know what you do. To be honest, that's the first time I've ever really seen that happen. Now, I've seen guys purposely spill ice buckets and, and stuff <laughs> to that nature, but that's a different story because then you have to clean up and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you, you definitely knew it was on purpose, but it still looks better for your fighter, so to speak. I've never seen a fighter just flat out sit on the stool like that and, and not get up. And so, uh, I don't know. It was just one of those situations. So, I yeah, won't and go I'm, into a whole lot of controversy. Yeah. Go for it. I was just, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll look up the details of like what classifies as. I know if a fighter doesn't answer the bell, that's retiring. But it's like, what's the threshold? But regardless of what the threshold is, if the referee has to physically make you get back in the fight, that's not the referee's job. You know? Like, it's not the no, referee's job. Not. Yeah, that, that, I mean, and I love Big John. He's one of the best, and he's one of the guys that helped write these rules. But if he has to, phys like, get up, take the stool away, I'm sorry, that's too much. Like, that's not the ref's job. The ref's job is to say, oh, I gave you two warnings. This is your third and last warning. I'm going to give you to the count of three. All right, you're not up. That's the fight. You quit. That's 30, 29 seconds. That's almost half of an entire another in between rounds. Like <laughs> you got a you got a fifty percent increase in his rest time. Yeah, so no, it's, I can it's put horrendous. It was, but at the same time, we got to remember, Tim Kennedy also got that that same amount of rest time. Now, granted, he might not have needed it as much, but he still got it as well. No, but he was. And, he was ready to fight. What I was saying, though, is I don't know that John McCarthy has the authority uh, to step in there and, and call that fight. I don't know if it needs to come from the commissioner. If it's again, if it comes from the ref or from the uh, cage side doctor. So I'm not going to blame Big John. Uh, I think he did what he thought he could do, which was pick Yul's big ass up off the chair and and get rid of the stool and get him back in the fight. Now, as far as the fight goes, I mean. It was a great fight, back and forth. It was solid. You know, the old first round, Kennedy got the second round, you know, definitely uh, put the whooping on in there at the end, and then to start the third round uh, with his eyes closed and everything, you know, lands the punch that, you know, completely changed the fight. And, and Tim can never recover and, and ultimately took the beating. But, you know, Kennedy's a tough dude. He'll, he'll certainly rebound. Uh, Yo Romero, though, uh, extra 29 seconds or not, uh, this guy, he's got skills. And so I, I again, want to see what he can do moving up the ladder of competition. You know, I, I can't really take anything away from him because uh, his camp was smart enough to cheat and steal him an extra 29 seconds to get the victory. I mean, <laughs> while it's not cool, like, Honestly, we see stuff like that all the time, you know. In fights last night, we saw guys grabbing the cage. These these things happen. Uh, nobody's above cheating, really. And that's what it is. But you know, we can't fault really Yol for doing everything he needed to do to fight. Uh, I don't know what else to say about it. So let's move on. Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier, Justin, start us off. Man, like I said before, like this is a guy who you don't you don't do that to him. Now I don't I actually thought McGregor coming into this fight was gonna be the better fighter. Um but I thought it was gonna be a war. You know, Poirier's had his ups and downs, you know, he got tapped out by the Korean zombie, he had three he went three rounds with Cub Swanson. Um but the guy doesn't like this doesn't happen to him. You know, even when he lost to Chan Sung Jung, like that was in the fourth round, like, you know, just epic battle, fight of the year, everything. Like, and but McGregor just made it look easy. You know, he proved, like, the hype um, is legit. And I had a lot of questions about him going to that Brandel fight, and he just destroyed Brandel. And I was like, okay, this guy's legit. Do I think he gets a title shot the next fight? No, I don't. But part of that's just because, you know, uh, the, that title's already kind of tied up a little bit. You know, we got at least one more fight, possibly two coming up on that. Um, but I would like to see him get in there and continue to mix it up. Um, you know, he definitely earned himself top five guy. Uh, you know, he just beat a top five guy. So let's get him in, you know. Mendez is fighting for the title. Then we got Cub and Frankie fighting. 
the winner of that's getting the next title shot. I don't care how big Conor McGregor is. That's just happening. Um, I don't know, Ricardo Lamas, I guess. There's just, you know, there's only so many guys left in the division before he just, you know, finishes them all. But I'm a fan of McGregor. I believe the hype. But let's get him one more before we get him a title shot. Chunky. Man, the dude is really good. He proved it tonight. I mean, he ran through Dustin Poirier like no one else ever had. But like Justin brought up, he's kind of in no man's land because you ha- you already have Mendez and and um, Aldo fighting, and then you have Swanson and Edgar, and the winner of that one's more than likely going to get the winner of the uh, Mendez-Aldo fight. And so it's like, you know, McGregor's going to be waiting around a little bit before he gets a shot at the title. You know, unless some um, injuries happen or something like that, you know, he could be, you know, a year out before he gets a shot. So, but we know it's inevitable unless he has some, you know, has loses some, you know, stay busy fight or something that we don't anticipate happening. But, yeah, I mean, he looks scary, man. He's really scary. He proved he is for real. Well, I won't call it a stay, a stay busy but fight. I think the UFC is going to make him fight one more time. And I, to be real honest, I think he's going to be fighting probably the winner of Frankie and Cub, depending on how uh, uh, First off, we know Jose is an injury machine, so uh, the odds of him coming out of this fight 100% healthy and ready to go are slim to none. So we know he's going to be taking some time off. So uh, depending on, on how things play out, uh, I, I certainly think the UFC is going to tell Connor that your win off over Dustin Poirier is not strong enough to get you a title shot. Because uh, while I love Connor, that's his only significant victory in the UFC. Uh, big fan of Max Holloway. He's you know still a B level fighter at the moment. Uh, Diego Brandao, I've always thought is overrated. Yes, he did win the show and that and blah blah blah. He's a level fighter at best as well. So uh, you got to get some wins over some A-level guys before you start uh, getting title shots in the UFC. Now, uh, the fight tonight, uh, great fight. Dustin Poirier, in my mind, is an A-level fighter. And, and Connor, uh, it, from the moment the bell rang, he was winning that fight. Uh, I picked Poirier. I thought Poirier could uh, outstrike Connor, could out out work him, but I don't know. Uh, I, there was con- controversy about the, uh, you know, shot that dropped him and that kind of stuff. Uh, who knows? You know, it would, certainly wasn't intentionally to be in the back of the head, but maybe the elbow did clip him there. Uh, and then the other shot that was in the back of the head. When you're in the moment trying to finish a fight, when the fighter's in a certain position, these things happen. Uh, you can't take anything away from Connor. He went in there. He did did his job. He, you know, did something that no one else was able to do, and that was make Dustin look scared, silly, and not like a quality fighter. So uh, I I do want to see Connor moving on to uh, I don't want to say step up in competition, but I do want to see him uh, get another fight. Well, a fight fight that's perfect right now would be Bermudez. The guy's 7-0 Seven and zero since that loss to to Brandao. That puts him at seven and one in the UFC. Seven fight win streak, right? He's might be only at ten now, but I think he's an A level fighter. Um, I also mentioned Ricardo Lamas earlier. Those guys are squaring off November fifteenth, so I think it's pretty clear who Conor McGregor fights next. The winner of that fight, Bermudez Lamas, fights the fight McGregor. And if all those out and he he's not healthy to fight the you know assuming he beats Mendez and he's not healthy to fight the winner of Cub Edgar then the winners of those two bouts fight. Like, I think uh, there's a lot of options right now for featherweight, and uh, I think the best matchup for him, with everyone else tied up, the winner of Bermudez Lamas. Would certainly make sense. Would certainly yep. make sense. And it's a, a fight I would like to see, and you know, it would certainly uh, fill a soccer stadium over there in Ireland, that's for sure. So uh, the UFC has a lot of options with, with Cobb, and there's a lot of – or with uh, – Connor, and there's a lot of things that they can do with him. But, you know, he's proven that the high train is uh, the real deal. The guy hits hard, and, you know, he he has the aura that, that the fans love. All right, moving right along. Co-main event. Donald Cerrone, Eddie Alvarez. Fuller, why don't you start us on this one? Um, you know, Eddie started off strong. 
like kind of what I expected. Um, I thought he was going to be able to keep, keep Cowboy, you know, on his heels the whole time, keep pressure on him. But like Cow, you know, like everyone knows, and Cowboy himself knows, he's a little bit of a slow starter. So if he can find his rhythm, find his timing, it's going to be a bad day. But the one thing I couldn't get out of my mind was just the size difference. Like, I don't know how much weight Eddie cuts, um, but I know Donald cuts a lot of weight. He was just so much taller and bigger than him. They look like they were in two different weight classes. So I don't know if it's possible or not, but if you got guys like Donald Cerrone walking around that lightweight division right there in you know, top three, top five of it, um, you might want to consider making the drop to featherweight if possible. Because I think he can be competitive in the UFC and he can hang with the best guys. Because you got to remember, Donald's just had this resurgence in his career. He's just destroying everyone right now. You know, we all forgot about that loss to Nate Diaz already. Um, but I think with Alvarez, I think he can be. I don't think he's going to be fighting and winning the title anytime soon. But uh, we'll see. You know, octagon jitters does affect some guys more than others. So, but I think at the end of the day, he was just. He was outsized. He wasn't able to get it to the ground and work any top game. So that hurt him a lot, too. You know, Donald Cerrone is a, is a big lightweight, but he's not even, you know, top five, top seven biggest lightweights. I mean, Anthony Pettis is bigger than Donald Cerrone is. Uh, Gilbert Melendez is probably bigger, bigger than Cerrone, too, for that matter. Uh, and then look at someone like Ben Henderson. I mean, his the guy's huge. And so, yeah, I absolutely agree if Eddie could make the weight that he should be fighting at 145 pounds. I do think that in the UFC he is going to struggle. Uh, again, think about someone as big as TJ Grant. I, I really do think that he's going to uh, struggle with, with uh, bigger, stronger guys. And that's one of the things I said on the show Wednesday night. And why I picked Cerrone to win this fight, because I did think he would be able to use his size, his length, his range, and uh, dictate the, base, the pace of the fight, lead the dance, and do the things that he wanted to do. And uh, really, other than when they were in the clinch in the first round, and uh, Eddie was able to uh, land those shots upside the air hole, uh, he really didn't offer uh, anything uh much to Donald. Yes, he uh, caught Donald off balance, almost dropped him, and, and hit him with a, a stiff jab every now and again. But like you said, it was just the bully inside the octagon. Donald was too big, too strong, and, and I think Eddie's going to run into a lot of that board. So I'll have to see. But welcome to the UFC, Eddie. Glad to have you over here. I uh, can't wait to see what you can do. And and hell, it, it really was a great fight. It was a good performance. But I thought Donald should have finished him in the third round. Instead of going to the ground with him when Eddie could stand up, you make the guy stand up and you kick his freaking leg again until he falls down. Then you stand up again and you kick it again and again and again and again. You don't go down to the guard and, and let the guy freaking recover. I don't. I never understood why fighters do that. I don't. He wanted to recover. <laughs> That's what it was. But again, he, he didn't need to recover. He was doing just fine. Yeah. Just stand there, kick out the leg, and, and finish off the fight. Chelsea, give us your thoughts. Well, if we're going to get technical here, I guess Donald Cerrone is now the linear Bellator lightweight champion. True story. So congratulations to him on that. Um, but I echo your guys' thoughts. Eddie just looked tiny in there. I mean... Donald Cerrone was so tall, so lanky, so big. I mean, a lot of these dudes that in the lightweight division are cutting from, you know, I mean, well, they're walking around at 200 pounds, and they'll start their camps around 185 and then get down to 155 by the end of their camp. Eddie Alvarez isn't anywhere near that big. So yeah. I think that he needs to get with uh, he needs to get with um, you know, Mike Dolce or some nutritionalist and figure out a way to see if his body can make 45 in a healthy manner so that way he can be competitive in the UFC. Yeah, I certainly agree with that. I certainly agree with that. And there's Eric Trigel who uh, works with Maisha Tate and, and uh, a whole ton of people anyway, so he, he would be good. But I don't think Eddie would have any problem making 145, to be real honest. Um, if Jose Aldo, who is, again, bigger than Eddie Alvarez is, can drop down and make the weight, then uh, so so can Eddie. Again, it's just uh, 
getting all that water out of your body. Use some salt, sit in the sauna, uh, albaline, rub that stuff off. Anyways, again, great fight, Freddie. Great fight for Donald. Uh, real quickly, where does Cerrone go from here? What does the UFC do with this guy? I mean, obviously, he has just been uh, wrecking fools. He now is a Bellator lightweight champion. So, uh, do we do champion versus champion? How? Wh what are your guys' thoughts for the, as, the next next as one a, for Cerrone? As a fanboy, I want to see champion versus champion to unify those belts, just to be like, Man, fuck you, Bellator. That'd be funny. Um, but. <laughs> Uh, I think what we do is, uh, well, we have to wait to see what happens with Pettis and Gill. That's a given. Pettis is injury prone, so assuming this fight even goes his way, I don't piss and pay him making a quick three, four month turnaround to defend that belt again. Um, you know, uh, Habib right there is sitting next in line, but he's been out for a while too, and while the numbers on the rankings say he should fight next, eh... You know, when you're out that long, it's hard to sell that fight. So I say, uh, depending on Khabib's time frame of return, because um, we're still got a little bit of time before the title fight, and how healthy Donald is, we have that fight, and that'll determine the next number one contender after Gil. Logically, it's a perfect fight. It's a big fight they can sell, and it sets up the winner to be a big name fight to sell the title fight really good. Because Pettis is still trying to define himself as. Like he's got a lot of potential to sell, but he's not there yet, and he hasn't defended the belt yet. So that's a hard one to sell for pay-per-views. Yeah, I think Pettis has a lot of work to to prove that he's a champion that can consistently uh, defend the belt. Now, the uh, word I'm getting, you know, Habib's not going to be ready any t to fight anytime soon. He's still probably eight months away uh, from getting back to action. So... Uh, when he does get back to action, no, he's not getting an immediate title shot or anything like that. He's going to have to fight somebody. Problem is, because it's so far down the road, Cerrone will probably have three fights in before then. So uh, I don't see that as being his next fight. Uh, ben Henderson, i got to be honest, I don't know that anyone wants to see a third fight between those guys, even though the previous two happened you know, years ago in the WEC, I don't know uh, that anyone wants to see that. So, honestly, uh, with little uh, Diaz coming back and getting Dos Anjos, there's no rematch there. I don't know what the UFC does with, with Cerrone. Maybe he gets a, a title shot if, if uh, Gilbert Melendez wins. And that could be uh, Gil's first title defense. But I don't see him doing a rematch with Anthony Pettis. Um, Again, in the first fight, losing the way he did with the body kick uh, and losing so quickly, I don't know that the UFC can, can push that, that fight, I think. Uh, Cerrone's still got to kick some heads off some fools before uh, people are thinking he's winning that fight. Shelky, what yeah. do you think? Um, you know, he, he is kind of interrupted. What about someone like a Miles Jury or someone like that? Young well, up and cover. See if I'm Cerrone's manager, I'm like, I would love to, see him, I'm like, I would no. love to yeah. see him fight. Yeah, again, I would love to see him fight Miles Jerry. Uh, but that's a, a no win fight for, for Cerrone. Uh, yeah, as a now, fan, that's a fight I'd like to see. But... Yeah, it is. Now, Kevin Harvick being Cerrone's manager, honestly, I don't know uh, how much dealings he's doing with. Uh, deciding who Cerrone fights and who Donald doesn't. I think uh, Harvick's more in there to make Donald money and teach him how to manage his money than, than do anything else. I'm, I'm pretty sure Donald makes his own fight decisions. So if I'm done, though, again, that's a no-win fight for me. Uh, it's a fight that I should win, and then after I do win it, I'm no better off than I was because I beat a guy that, again, that I should have should have beat that's not propelling me towards a a title shot, but as a fan, absolutely, I would, and I would love to see it. I would love the, to see the Bobby. I would love to see the Bobby Green fight. But, um, he's booked with someone else too, so I don't know. What do you got, Shelky? Well, that's just what I was gonna say. It's like, I mean, you don't put him up against Miles Jury. Bobby Green's booked up. You're not gonna put. I mean, he's in the same type of situation with Josh Thompson, and the rest of the division's locked up. So. If you're Donald Cerrone, you really don't. I mean, I know he likes to stay really active, but 
he has no fights. That makes sense right now. Everyone's tied up. Um, when does Johnson get healthy? Michael Johnson. That fight makes sense. He's not the biggest name, but you know he's still a very marketable fighter. He's right up there, top ten. That one makes the most sense. I know he's hurt, but I don't know what type of injury or how long he's going to be out. So yeah, whoever I'm not, Johnson's at ten right now. So. Yeah, yeah, Johnson's at ten. I, I'm not too sure how long he's he's going to be out. But again, as far as fandom goes, that's that's certainly an exciting fight. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll say it. We could end up seeing uh, Benson uh, Henderson. Yep. Even though he's he's coming off the loss, it's you know it, it really is a great fight for both guys. So who knows? You know, if you're Joe Silver right now, um, it's a good life, but this is a this is a tough call for sure. All right, guys, let's move on. Main event. Uh, we'll start with you, Shelky, on this one. Mighty Mouse Johnson, Chris. Carriasso, what you got? Demetrius Johnson is the most unappreciated fighter on this planet. No one can appreciate how good he is and how technical he is when he fights. I mean, he has made everybody in the division since he's won the title and in root of winning the title, and he's made it look easy. He's made it to the point where you know it's so easy that fans think it's boring, but it's not boring. It's just he makes good fighters look bad. And it's a, just a testament to how good he is and to how good Matt Hume is. Because I think that Matt Hume is possibly the most underrated trainer in the sport today. And the fact he's that one, he's been able yeah. to... Yeah, I mean, he's been able to take Demetrius Johnson, work with him from the ground up, and look what he's done with him. He's created a fighter who is completely clean out of the division, you know, that they're scraping at the bottom of the barrel to find containers for him, and... In all reality, the only fighter left for him at, at 125 is John Dotson whenever he gets done, back from injury. Who he's already know. beat. Yeah, but. who he's already beat, but <laughs> Dotson has evolved, and that is the only fight. I mean, are you going to put him up against uh, you know, I, yeah, Ian McCall or Ian McCall or, um, or Joseph Benavides again? I mean, none of those fights make sense. It, it, like, I think I was jo joking with Josh on Twitter, you know, we need to call Dr. Bruce Banner and pump up uh, Demetrius Johnson so he can go fight some heavyweights or get that shrink ray from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and take some of the heavyweights, shrink them down to give Demetrius Johnson some more competition. So other than that, he's got nothing left at featherweight. Yeah. And well, I, I don't think the problem was that Kerry also wasn't a deserving contender. I, I think he very much was when you look at the landscape of the division. It's just that Johnson is on this another level. He's he's from outer space, just destroying all the Earthlings. That's what's happening right now. This guy is from Pluto coming down and just slaying left and right. He's beat number one, number two, number three. Didn't fight number four, but that guy lost to Benavidez. Destroyed number five. Didn't fight number six, but that guy uh, lost to Ali. Uh, destroyed number seven. And now number eight. So out of the top eight, he's fought and beat all of them, but two who themselves have losses to guys higher up the food chain. So when you look at who's left for him, yeah, I want to see the Dodson rematch. I think Dodson gave him the most problems. Um, I would actually like to see a third fight with McCall too. If he, I think he's slated to take on, uh, yeah, Lineker here coming up in November. So if he can keep that high, that train moving, he's going to set himself up pretty good for an a third fight with DJ, but his first title shot. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't see anyone dethroning the champ anytime soon. And it is a shame he's not a big enough guy. I think it just highlights the fact that none of the guys in that division are big stars. Um, and that's the problem. You know, you got to fight big names to become a big name, and they just don't exist there. Uh, you know, when he, he gets asked about moving it back up to 135, he says, why would I do a harder job for the same amount of money? You know, I'm happy here. I want to keep beating these guys. I want to defend this title 10, 20 times if I can. And that might be what happens. We might see him clear out literally everyone in the division and then retire with nothing else to prove. But he'll still never make Anderson Silva money, unfortunately. No, he won't. He won't. Um, <clears throat> a couple of things. So if I was him, I wouldn't move up either because uh, pretty soon Dominic Cruz is going to be the kingpin of that division again. Uh, we already know what's going to happen in that fight. As much as I love 
uh, Mighty Mouse Johnson. The problem is, is Dominic is as quick as he is, and he's a whole lot bigger and stronger. And so uh, we've already seen that fight. Nothing's going to change. Uh, with that being said, at 125 pounds, he is the best fighter on the planet. There's no question. And pound for pound, he might be uh, top three uh, in the world. So. He's just in a very tricky position, like you guys said. You know, he's he's not a star. He's not in a division that's going to make uh, tons of money. Now, uh, I have to disagree with with uh, Shelky, though. I think uh, any true MMA fan, anyone who knows the sport, does appreciate how good he is. The problem is, there's just no one that's as good as him to push him. There's no one that's as good as him to give us an exciting fight like we can get in other weight divisions. And I think that is the problem. Uh, yes, I think we all want to see John Dotson fight Demetrius uh, Johnson again for the simple fact that if John was a more seasoned UFC fighter the first time they fought, he probably would have won that fight. Uh, but his inexperience allowed DJ to take over the fight and win those later rounds and, and get the victory. So, uh, yeah, I think everybody does want to want to see that fight again. But I don't know that anything will be different. Demetrius Johnson is that good. He is a, a step above everybody. And so uh, until someone else, you know, comes along that's on his level, he's just going to be stuck in no man's land. He's going to be the kingpin of, of, while it's a very exciting division, as far as, you know, depth, it, it's by far uh, the weakest division that the UFC has. So. Uh, it is what it is, but hats off to Demetrius Johnson because, again, uh, it's not like he barely beats these guys. He completely makes them look silly. He has uh, put it out on, on Twitter. He's in there handing out schoolyard ass whoopings. He's uh, truly uh, steps above everybody else. All right, guys, uh, let's start with you, Fuller. Final thoughts on the, sh on the show tonight. Uh, if you didn't catch the fight, I'm sorry you missed out on something epic. Uh, even with all the controversies and everything going on, the fight card itself, top to bottom, very exciting. Uh, I'm betting they're going to replay the prelims later on tonight on Fox Sports 1, so if you didn't watch it then, go ahead and DVR it. If you missed the pay-per-view and you can't afford to pay for it still, check out the MMACorner.com, full video highlights. Uh, and thanks for tuning in and listening to us ramble about the thing we love the most, fighting. Shalky. Yes, um... Like like Fuller said, check out the MMA Corner in case you couldn't catch the pay-per-view. Um, Demetrius Johnson cannot stress how good he is. He's going to be the Anderson Silva of the of the flyweight division. No one's going to be able to touch him for years and years. And then, um, yeah, wait for Donald Cerrone to get another 12-pack of Budweiser and some fruit roll-ups and watch him go in there and kick some more ass. Yeah, you know... Uh you got to love a man who flat out admits I got to where I am today by drinking beer and eating fruit roll-ups. So uh, it is what it is. All right. Uh, UFC 178 Johnson versus Carriasso was one hell of a card. DMMACorner.com will have uh, full fight video highlights posted as soon as they become available. So if you miss the fights, uh, definitely come back. We'll have you covered on that. Uh, busy week coming up, a lot of events. Uh, we will be back uh, Tuesday night with the MMA Corner news show, giving you uh, all the top news stories of the week. Then on Wednesday, immediately following Top 20, we will be back with the MMA Corner post. Or I'm sorry, the MMA Corner prediction show. We will be hitting up both cards for next weekend. There's UFC Fight Night 53, Nelson vs. Story live on Fight Pass from Stockholm, Sweden. Then uh, same day, just in the evening. You know how the UFC likes to do it. UFC Fight Night 54, McDonald vs. Affidy. Uh, live from Nova Scotia, Canada, will be on Fox Sports 1. Uh, they're airing the entire card, so uh, you'll definitely want to check that out. But again, we will be back Wednesday night to give you our predictions on both shows. Then we will be back immediately following UFC Fight Night 54 to recap both UFC Fight Night 53 and UFC Fight Night 54. Until then, if there's anything that we missed, go to the MMACorner.com, your home for all things MMA. Everything you need is right there. Uh, interviews, 
event recaps, highlight videos, all that kind of stuff right there. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors. Again, BattleBomb.com, the only pain reliever with the knockout power. Check them out. Bone me aside. Love their product. For Jason Schelke, Justin Fuller, I'm Josh Davis. Keep living the MMA corner lifestyle. Peace.